Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate service to service invocation using PowerShell port application. The image illustrated over here is detailing about how the service to service invocation works. In the left side, you can see a service A, which is nothing but a HTTP endpoint uh, application. It can be of any app, be it Node.js, Golang, or it can be a PowerShell port application or anything. So when I start the service, I'm sorry, when I start the server A, so that it will instantiate the service A. Okay, so that means you will have a HTTP endpoint access. Whenever I'm starting the server, it will instantiate a Dapper instance along with it. Because we all know that Dapper has got a sidecar architecture model. So it will instantiate the Dapper instance for me. Similarly, that's going to happen in service B. That's nothing but another application which has the HTTP endpoint access. Okay. So this Dapper instance A, Dapper instance B communicate, uh, how that communication is happening. Whenever I'm spinning it up in the self-hosted mode, that is in my local machine, it will create a name resolution component by itself. So that will uh, instantiate the M DNS component that's out of the box. For that, we don't write any code extensively. If in case you're going to do that on the Kubernetes, then you can have a Kubernetes name resolution component for that. Okay, over here, I'm using the MDNS component, which is out of the box. I don't need to uh, think a lot about it. But if you want to get in detail about how this name resolution component works, you can access this uh, name resolution component hyperlink documentation. So this helps you out, right? So you can ha use HashiCorp console, which is an alpha status. Uh, MDNS is in a stable and Kubernetes is in stable. This gives you the more uh, detail about it. Okay, now, so once that has happened, what happens is the communication between the Dapper instance A, you see here, and Dapper instance B, uh, is going to happen through the MTLS encryption. So that's how Dapper provides the secure connectivity between service to service. So enough of theory. Let's see that in the action. I have got two uh, folders here, checkout service and order processing service, and each has got one PowerShell script each. So if I open up checkout service.ps1, you can see I have got a start port server command line, which will allow me to start a hook up a web server, right? And that's going to run in my local host and uh, the port is 6002. Okay, before getting into the checkout service, I think it will be good if I open up the order processing. Okay, so the order processing, it's also the same more or less same code and I've got the port 6001 which will accept one parameter called ID. The route over here is order processing forward slash one. So if end user provides order processing forward slash one, so they get some different uh, data. So for one, you get name as a pen and ID as one. And for two, you get pencil something. It's just an illustration. It's just a mocking up an ordering service, order management, okay? It's not actually going to do anything. And it just give the JSON response back for me. All right, so let me quickly see how this works in my local machine. I mean, uh, without calling the Dapper CLI, okay? So for that, I need to just do order processing and order processing. So when I start this server, I will get an application. Okay, let me access that. Okay, that's good. I'm getting a response called 404 because there is no route uh, with 6001 itself. So I need to just give forward slash one and push enter. Okay, sorry, I have to give order processing and yeah, order processing forward slash one. So now I get um, the response here, right? You see here. Now if I do number two and I get pencil ID number two, if I give any other number apart from this, I'm going to get no order ID form. So if I go back to my code, so anything. I get no order ID form. Simple as that. Similar way, I've got another service that is checkout service. There's two different uh, API, okay? In checkout service, I'm calling the order processing through the Dapper API. This is Dapper service to service invocation API, okay? So my order processing application, I tell my Dapper port should be 3601 while starting up i'll define that port 3601 and this is the api v10 invoke order processing sorry v1.0 uh, invoke 
order processing is nothing but my application id when i start my order processing that's going to be my app id if i name it as service a it's service a if it's service b it's a service b that's it it's a string naming convention so you can just go ahead and define whatever you want and method order processing this is my route this is the method which i'm going to invoke which accepts one parameter id so i'm giving the order id so when i pass localhost 6002 checkout port slash one in turns it will go ahead and call the endpoint running on the dapper instance b that is in the order processing okay no now here you have to consider checkout service as a service a and uh, order processing as service b illustrated in this image so the service a dapper instance call service b dapper instance and get the response and give it back to service a all right let's see how that works for some reason i've got some trouble over here now let me call the order processing here i just want to quickly check the port number check out the 6002 right so i'll come back here i'll name this as checkout 6002 and my dapper port is going to be 3602 but that doesn't um, matter a lot here because my checkout service is in turns going to call 3601 which is going to be in my order processing so this is correct so i'll start my order processing let this application start over now i got 3602 my dapper grpc port is 6001 we are not going to do any function on this now at this point of time and i'm calling the powershell code and invoking this api instead of running this application directly i'm using dapper run uh, dapper cli i'm invoking it through the dapper right and i've defined the app ids checkout over here i made the app ids order processing right that's why in my code i'm using the order processing this is my application id and this is the endpoint if i change the app id or the route i need to define it over here okay that's good so now i'm gonna start the um, checkout service right sorry so i just want to start over the checkout service got some issue because i don't see it's working as expected it gives dapper id dapper d process exited with error okay what happened over here then okay here i can see it's working as expected let's see how this uh, invoke rest method URI http local host 6002 checkout one all right not sure what will be the result here let's see could not update sidecar metadata got some issue but i got a result i don't know what's the problem here now let's see how this works now this time it should give me some error it says unable to okay unable to connect to the remote server because the server is not working as expected what should be the reason behind it okay let me quickly see in the dapper how to invoke http all right let me copy this because i have not done any changes over here now i call yeah that's exactly what i did this is listening in 36001 and this is in 6002 okay now yeah now it's working as expected now i can quickly go back here and run this application that should work as expected if i do to how this working when i'm going to invoke 60 uh, localhost 600 to check out route uh, with the parameter id2 this in turns call this endpoint 
localhost 3601 which is running in dapper instance b and uh, that's how exactly i'm calling out this is calling the dapper api partially and calling out uh, the method which we hosted in the order processing application thanks a lot for watching my video and in my next video i'm going to explain little more about the building blocks in dapper thanks a lot